Well, g'day and welcome to this, the first quick tip for 2012. Today I'll be showing you quiz creation in Blackboard Learn. Uh, note that uh, Blackboard also refers to these as tests, so those words are interchangeable. So let me start first by showing you the student experience. Here I am, I'm logged in as a student, and I'm going to undertake a quiz. Um, it's the general knowledge quiz. Um, before the student commences, they're given some uh, details about the quiz. The fact that this quiz has 10 minute time interval, um, the number of attempts are allowed, etc. When a student begins a quiz then, you'll notice that because I've set this with a timer, there's a timer running on the top of the screen. As the student scrolls down the qui um, quiz, they can see the various questions. This first question is a multiple choice, a very common question type, where students can choose one answer. If they wish to, they can hit the Save Answer button. You'll notice it does that automatically as well which gives them a sense of progress through the quiz. As we scroll down, you'll notice different question types. This is a multiple response, which one or more of the following are true. And in this occasion, students can indeed tick multiple answers. And I've chosen a rather interesting question type as my final example. This is a jumbled sentence where students can have a passage of text and choose words that complete that text. Save that answer as well. Okay, so the student progresses through, they've got to the end, they can hit save and submit, which will submit that answer for um, grading. They get a quick confirmation screen and then if they hit the OK button they can get feedback about how they uh, went, how, what their performance was like. They can see the answers that they selected and the correct answer in each instance and the total number of points. And you'll note that that's been entirely computer marked without the intervention of a teacher. So that's the end game. Let's now see what steps the teacher would need to do to create a quiz like that. And move this aside for now and go in now as a teacher. You'll note that um, there is a folder called assessments in each unit. I'd encourage you to put all of your accessible items in there, including quizzes like the one we're about to create. We hit the create assessment button and under there we choose test. Remember test and quiz mean the same thing. And we can create a new quiz. Give it a title, I'm going to call mine general knowledge. You can give it a description should you wish to, and some instructions as well. Now that we've created our quiz, we need to add questions to it. So what we do is to go into the Create Question drop-down list, and you'll see a whole range of choices there. I've got, I'm not going to cover all of that in these sessions, but there are uh, good guides which I'll link to that show you the different question types. So I'm going to start with a multiple choice. There's an area for question title. Now this isn't a title that students actually see, it's really for you. Um, and you can give it question, um, oops, maybe because I'm doing general knowledge questions, I might just call it GK1, for example. There's an area for the text. I'm just going to copy and paste to speed things up. So that's the question, of course. And as we scroll down, there are some options here. Most of them I leave as they are, but the one I really like is this one here, show answers in random order. So for this multiple choice quiz, it's going to jumble up the relevant answers such that students see a different presentation of this quiz, which is really nice. And then we get to put in the answers. Um, you'll note that it hints that the first answer um, might be where you store the correct response. So. And then, in the lower boxes, a number of incorrect responses. So far, so good. We've put our question together. There's some area here that you can put feedback if you wish. I'm not going to do that now. And I'm going to scroll right to the end and hit Submit. 
So you'll see um, now you've got a quick summary of your question, including the type of question it is, um, and what the correct answer is. Let's go on now to produce another question. I'm going to choose now multiple answer. This is the which one or more of the following are true. So I'm just going to again copy this just to save typing. Again, I'm going to hit the randomize option. Now, because we're choosing multiple answer, we can have indeed more than one correct answer. And in doing so, you need to a indicate what the answer is in each case. So, and also whether that answer is correct or not. And then, of course, we want some incorrect answers as well. And we hit Submit. So we now have our second question authored. You can see indeed that this one has two correct answers. And I'm going to go on to create a third question now, which is that jumbled sentence question. Now at this point what I normally would do is have a passage of text which I'd previously copied and pasted from somewhere, save typing it out. So in this case I've just got the Australian National Anthem. So I've got some text. Think of this as maybe a passage out of a textbook or maybe some um, something like some regulations that you want your students to learn. Um, you can also do it as, almost as a sequencing activity. So I've got the text in that I want, but I want some gaps in here. And for instance, one of the gaps is this word rejoice. What I'm going to do is to in fact remove that word, cut it out. Um, so control X is a quick way of cutting that word out. And I'm going to replace it with a square bracket and the number 1. That's going to be the first gap. Now what I want to do is to paste the answer then, lower down, into the answer 1 field. So can you see what I've done there? Cut the word out of the sentence, pasted it below. So let's make some more gaps. I'm going to cut that out. Control X. Replace it with now a number 2. And paste that answer into the number 2 box below. I'm just going to continue down to do that a couple more times now. So I've created my gaps and put in the answers as well and I hit the next button. Now we get, if you like, a confirmation screen to confirm the correct answers. So what you do here is you actually complete it yourself. Australians all let us rejoice for we are young and free with golden soils. So you can see what we're doing now is to actually prime the computer with the correct answers and submit. So we've actually now created our three questions including this gap fill exercise here. We've done the question authoring part of the activity and if I scroll to the bottom and hit the OK button we're now returned to the screen where we get to now select our quiz you can then decide how you might want this quiz delivered to your students let me scroll down and show you what these choices mean. So, make the link available? Yes, that just means the students are able to see it. Create an announcement for the students so that they know that that quiz is now available. I like that option as well, so I'm going to choose yes for that. Do we wish to allow for multiple attempts? And if so, what number? So I might choose three attempts now. Force completion I'm not going to choose. That's an option which is probably for, if you like, um, invigilated quizzes. It means that students have to start the quiz and stay on it um, if you're concerned about them going off, say, to Google and um, finding the answers. You can lock them in, but I'm not going to choose that option. You can set a timer. And I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. And if you use the timer option, 
you can force the submission of the quiz once that 15 minutes is expired, effectively locking in whatever answers they'd had at that, up to that point um, and not allowing them to continue with any late answers. You can set dates and times of quizzes should we wish to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to scroll down through some options here to some more important stuff. Now, this is now what feedback is given to students at the end of the completion of their quiz. You'll notice it says I'll give them the score and that's great. What answers the student chose, I like to give that as well. I'm also going to choose correct answers, but think about this choice as you're making it. If, for instance, you're allowing for multiple attempts, as I am, you might not wish to give the correct answers because then the next attempt the student has, they already know what the answers are. For me, this is a self-test activity. I'm not greatly concerned by that, and I'm going to choose the correct answers option. And then how you might want the, the quiz um, displayed to students. I like this all at once option where you see all the questions down the page but note that you can do one question at a time they need to complete that before they get to see the next question. You can also randomize the presentation of those questions right so that um, students will see the questions in a different order which can also be nice. You hit the submit button and that quiz is now deployed. It's available to students and they can complete it as you saw me do at the start of this recording. So that's all there is to it.